Hello, my name is John and this is the Mask Fest Journal. Today I'm going to talk to you about The Pulse. Since there were no new books for me this week, I instead decided to check out The Pulse by Brian Michael Bendis. Be warned, this video will contain some spoilers for not only The Pulse, but also Alias and The New Avengers. Before talking about The Pulse, I have to briefly discuss Alias, which this book is a sequel to. Alias was talked about quite a bit last year because of Jessica Jones, the Netflix TV series which borrowed characters and basic premise from that book. Despite being the source material for the show, it is really quite different from it. Jessica is less damaged in the comic. She also works on different cases that are not connected to the Purple Man or Kilgrave as he's only really known in the show. What I'm getting at is that having just seen the show is not really that helpful in understanding the characters and the story. The story begins right where Alias ended. Jessica has recently found out she's pregnant and has gotten together with Luke Cage. The responsibilities of becoming a parent is dawning on Jessica and she therefore accepts a job offer from Daily Bugle publisher professional Spider-Man hater J. Jonah Jameson to become a consultant on superhero issues on his new endeavor called The Pulse. The Pulse is the Daily Bugle's attempt to increase readership with the thought that the newspaper's old stance that superheroes are vigilantes with an authority problem is not what the public wants to read about. While Jessica Jones is the main character of the series, it's more a look into the Marvel Universe from the perspective of the regular people living in it. A lot of the time the story is told from a point of view of Jessica's colleagues Ben Urich, Kat Farrell and Terry Kidder. It is Terry Kidder's death that is the inciting incident for the series, a series that is basically divided into three parts with the overarching story being Jessica's pregnancy. The first part is a murder investigation, the second part is about being the little person in the larger conspiracy, and the third part is basically just Jessica getting ready to give birth and is seeking advice from her friends in the Avengers and the Fantastic Four. As I said, the first part is a murder investigation, not a murder mystery, as both the readers and the characters in the story knows who the murderer is very early on. And the story is more about the consequences for the paper and the characters if they go public with what they know. This story is very much connected to the Spider-Man mythos and has definite impact on future stories in both Spider-Man books and in Marvel books in general, specifically Secret Invasion and Dark Reign. Worth noting is that Terry Kidder is an obvious analogue for Lois Lane, her name being derived from two actresses who has famously played the character, Terry Hatcher and Margot Kidder. The second part, the conspiracy story, is a tie-in to the Marvel crossover event Secret War, an event I am almost completely unfamiliar with, but I think that kind of helps the story not knowing the bigger picture. The key part of the story is just how lost Jessica feels when everyone she knows cuts her off, following an attack that blows up her and Luke's apartment and lands Luke in a coma. She S.H.I.E.L.D. covers everything up and as a result, several factions like Hydra or even S.H.I.E.L.D. itself tries to manipulate Jessica for their own games. This section of the series is mostly memorable to me because of a scene where a drunk Wolverine cries about rape. It is very strange and extremely uncomfortable, not to mention fairly out of character. I said this series was divided into three parts, that's not strictly true. After the second part ended, there was a one issue tie-in with the House of M event that has nothing whatsoever to do with the rest of the series, so I chose to ignore it. The last part of the series is about what it's like for a superpowered person to deal with everyday life, with real life problems being larger. Like for example, that a hospital could deny you access if you're a mutant or an otherwise powered individual, simply because of the risk involved. They could not guarantee the safety of other patients if, for example, the newborn has a mutation that makes it radioactive or has a cry that could make people's heads explode. Final thoughts. Even though this series deals with some mature subjects like racism, it does it much less so than its predecessor, Alias. That comes natural with the territory as this is a mainstream Marvel book and Alias was a book published under the Max imprint, with a lot less restrictions regarding content and language. This does however make the world of this series seem very different from its predecessor, and the fact that we as an audience aren't in Jessica's head makes her seem like a different character as well. Other minor things of note is the slightly confusing status of the Daredevil's secret identity. In Alias, it has been pretty much revealed to the public that Matt Murdock is Daredevil, but in this series, it's a complete mystery to Jameson. Speaking of Jameson, I do really appreciate whenever a writer presents a nuanced view of the character rather than the raving lunatic with an irrational hatred for Spider-Man. Finally, this is a Brian Michael Bendis story and with that comes a lot of his staples. Decompressed storytelling with panels copy pasted and only dialogue changed or even one big panel with a ton of dialogue on the sidelines like reading a script. 
Do I recommend this story? Yes, I do. While the first and third part are a lot stronger than the middle, it does serve to give us a nice look into the goings-on in the Marvel Universe, as well as furthering along the character of Jessica Jones. It serves to bridge Alias with Bendis' New Avengers, where Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and their daughter play parts. If you're interested in this series, it should be pretty easy to find on places like Comixology. So yeah, those were some of my thoughts on The Pulse. I should be back next week with my regular comic recap. Did you enjoy this video? Please like, comment, subscribe and share this video. If you didn't like it or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments. See you next week, hopefully.